Hello everyone, Sarah Breen, your Earth School Shaman here to bring you your October 2022 energy updates. Now my first of all, my heart goes out to all those families that have been affected by Hurricane Ian um, and those of us um, who are waiting to hear back from family members um, to make sure they're okay. So um, September has been a very intense month. So those of you who um, have been through a lot, I recommend going back and listening to the September um, energy update and helped you process and move through September as I'm recording this on the very last day of September uh, because there was so much moving through. Now the four themes that we got moving for October is the first one is filling the void with the manifesting soul. We'll talk more on that. The second one is a perspective shift in the personal consciousness streams of ourselves. It's a, a real opportunity to heal and merge the mind and the ego as well. The third theme we have is acknowledging decay, which we're falling into the fall season here in New England, um, in realizing that it's a healthy part of our cycle and what we can learn from that process. And number four is the cosmic verbiage is actually on the rise and to listen to the heart and not so much the ego. So we'll have the rest of the updates um, coming right up. So welcome back everyone. So we have a lot moving forward for October, but I feel very hopeful with the energy and especially what has gone on in the world so far. The We do have some um, uh, classes coming up. First one in October is some ancestral healing, so you can check that one out. Um, we'll list that one below. Now the first theme, which they just want me to get right into, is filling a void feeling. And to acknowledge that um, in this process where um, I feel like everyone has gone through a lot of stuff, um, a lot of grief, a lot of loss, a lot of uh, death, loss of pets, loss of family members. There's just been a lot of loss. There's been a lot of souls that have been leaving and a lot entering. So with that comes this void feeling and this void feeling could easily be filled with more of our nonsense, <laughs> more of the same story that we don't want to continue to manifest. So what I found in October was this feeling of um, exile, like we're exiling part of ourselves that really no longer need to be in motion anymore. So the word exile kind of really hit me from the ancestors, but they use very strong words to kind of get something out of me in this process. So when I felt this um, feeling that exile was very strong, I said, well, what, what is this? What is this about? And they said that this is part of this death process within us, that we're going through a very thin veil in October, especially um, Samhain coming up in the end of the month. And when this thin veil happens, we have to be willing to let go of a part of ourselves that really doesn't serve us anymore. Meaning we may have shed a lot. September, I mean, August, September was a big processing month and big healing opportunities. But October seems like the month where we have to um, say goodbye to that part of ourselves that is, is no longer needed. So to be very mindful of that in the month of October and maybe try to take some time to sit in stillness as much as possible. There's, it feels like a very big contemplation type of month. Um, it feels like um, it's just going to be an opportunity for us to lean upon the invisible realm, lean upon your faith. Lean upon, you know, who you feel safe with, your community, your, um, maybe it's your partner, maybe it's not your partner, maybe you do need to find a community. It's more of this realizing that we want to fill this void with what wants to manifest, meaning your soul. Your soul wants to express itself fully and openly. And with that may come these feelings of anxiety, of, of tension, maybe, uh, you know, like how I reacted to the word exile, you know, this feeling of, oh my God, wh why do I have to feel this way? And I think it's so that we can acknowledge that these extreme emotions is an opportunity for us to bookmark it in our minds that 
we just need to allow space for ourselves for what is truly ours to manifest forward and with that we have to create space so this is going to be an opportunity to really open up into that space type of feeling so surrender comes up right with exile comes surrender right because there's grief and there's there's all these other things that move in motion just become very aware of that um, and just kind of put it into uh, into your mind and let it sink into your heart and just notice where you have to surrender in your life and notice what part of you that you need to finally say goodbye to and it's kind of walked out of your energy field and out of out of your system so that leads us to the second theme with these perspective shifts so the second theme birds are chirping the second theme was perspective shifts in the personal consciousness to meet the cosmic consciousness which is funny because it kind of correlates to the last theme as well so this was more of like some healing. There's this strength and courage that is necessary for us to, as our perspectives shift, our whole energy system shifts, like our whole being kind of shifts. And it's kind of like we can turn all the way around and look at everything from a different angle, from a different point of view. And that, that what came from this was heal the mind to merge with what needs to manifest. So... <laughs> It's coming back down to uh, rightful thinking and, you know, rightful feeling, rightful action, all of those things coming into alignment with what is unique and true to you. So there is no one, two, three step process in this, but to acknowledge that there needs to be a perspective shift in your mind to acknowledge that something needs to change. And with that acknowledging that something needs to change, we have to gain some strength within ourselves to have the courage to say, yes, I'm going to move forward, but moving forward means change. And it means ultimately you're answering something inside of you that maybe doesn't have a language that you can understand yet. Each of our souls has a specific language, a specific verbiage mostly in feelings and in how we uh, dance with our environment and that language is going to start shifting your perspective so the ancestors really came around and said this is this is the opportunity to hone in on your strength because we don't acknowledge how much strength we actually have we're human beings that can take a lot a lot all at once and we forget that because we always think we're so weak or we always think, uh, you know, we can't do something. And that's, that's the ego talking or that's our perspectives or beliefs that are really stopping us from growing and evolving. And we're here to grow and evolve. So we need to call upon our strength. And, you know, for me personally, I always, you know, call on power animals or uh, my guides and ancestors um, because I have that deep relationship. The question is, is what do you have a deep connection with? And what can you lean upon to help you see that strength that's already within you? So that's that perspective shift that is necessary for you to shift your per personal consciousness to actually align with the cosmic consciousness that is like seriously on a big, big rise. And we all have to evolve with that. And we all have our own process and we are our own a unique uh, set of guidelines and rules that we create upon ourselves in order to evolve. So just become aware of that for this month and it really helps us heal and align our rightful thinking so that we can um, evolve to the next phase in our journey because we really want to take this, this month, the energy opportunity that it's giving us and to kind of ride the wave instead of being uh, sucked under the undertow either way we're all going in that direction so it's your choice whether you want to ride it or do you want to be swept with it <laughs> the third theme was to acknowledge decay and I, again this word was like hard because they kept on showing me uh, a pumpkin because we're in we're in that season so they kept on showing me a pumpkin that doesn't get picked in the patch and it and it actually decays but it actually creates the, the, the fertilizer and um, all the seeds go back into the earth. So it was this purification process, okay? So it's the, it's the ancient energy of the shaman of purification. 
and it's usually done through decay, death, decay, and then fire, and then we actually transform through that. And it's quick, it's quickly, but sometimes those seeds need time. They need time to uh, to seep into the earth to actually grow. So it said, acknowledge decay is a healthy cycle of life in your life and in the world. So to take that analogy of a pumpkin that doesn't get picked in the patch. And how many times as children did we like not get picked for dodgeball and then we felt really bad. Um, and you know, that those feelings seep in over time. Sometimes those things need to happen to us. They've all happened to us in any way, shape or form, in any uh, experience that we've had and realize that maybe those are the things that we need to take to that first topic of exiling that out. Seeing it for what it is and then getting the strength from the second um, topic and then actually allowing that decay to happen. Now with decay, there comes grief. Right? There comes a little sorrow, there comes a little pain, and we don't really grow unless we move through those deeper emotions. And if we try to um, disassociate from them, it can actually cause a little bit more harm than good. That's why I always recommend make sure you have you know, access to a healthcare professional, um, a mental health professional, you know, a community, people that you can talk to, people that you know, they understand you at the level that you're at because sometimes we're surrounded by people who aren't at the level that we're at and then they look at us that we've got 10 heads. So as you evolve, you actually open, you allow what needs to decay to be purified so that what needs to manifest will grow. And you'll have all access to um, that beauty and that wonder that's always been there. We just can't see it with our own uh, dense lens of humanity, of our, of our humanness. All right. Which leads us to our fourth and final topic for October. And what I loved about this one was I actually, this one fell out of the, the deck, the ancestor deck. It was the ancestor of guidance. And um, it kind of looks at first you see hands, but then I realize it's a, um, it's an elk and it's, this is the opportunity to realize that as we heal and evolve, we're going to hear a lot of verbiage and that verbiage can also be very seductive because it toys with our stories and our imagination. So what it specifically said was cosmic verbiage is on the rise. Listen with the heart, not the ego. And this is how I train all my students to to take everything that we get in here and to bring it through the heart so we can listen through the heart. And we can see our world through this place, through this this deep uh, and complex set of, of parameters that we have within our being. And... As we heal and grow, our environment starts to change and then we start to hear things differently. We start to see things differently. And we have to be careful not to be seduced by those things along the way. So when I have clients who call or somebody that shows up, I'm not to sell them anything. It's all about what feels right within your heart. And that's just how it is, right? It's important that as this cosmic verbiage or things of, you might see different things all about, to not be seduced by the ego. And the ego is going to try to take you off um, where your heart wants to be. Because it fears moving forward. It fears change. It fears you not needing it anymore. And it's not that we're going to not have the ego anymore. The ego is a very essential part of our human life. But we need to have it in a place where we can listen to it when it says, hey, don't touch that. You'll probably be hurt by doing that. <laughs> Those are things we want to listen to. So when we have the ancestor of guidance that shows up with this cosmic verbiage, to me, it's really falling into that deep place of stillness in the heart and becoming a master of falling in that place. So that when life and chaos happens, lots of chaos happens you allow yourself you surrender to what's going on around you while keeping very healthy boundaries and realizing that I can process this stuff 
in my heart when I feel safe to do so. And that might be a couple weeks later, a couple hours later, a couple days later. So I want you to realize that in that point that when you go through chaos and the point when you start processing it, we have this void that the ego wants to sink you in and it wants to get you to go back to the chaos. Okay. So the month of October is really telling us to recognize this. What is this space? And where do you fall in to that being seduced by the cosmic verbiage? And it could come in many different shapes and forms based upon our triggers and where we are in our journey. So if you have a a gut instinct about something, listen to it, all right? And recognize where you are from the cosmic, from the chaos, the cosmic chaos, personal chaos, world chaos, and where you are in processing that said chaos. Where is that gap? All right. And then what is happening in that gap and not being judgmental and not being uh, super triggering about it. Just everything just is. So the month of October is really going to give us this opportunity to just kind of uh, sweep through things. And I feel like as we get to the end of October, it's literally going to be swept out. (laughs) So the work's going to be cut out for us in surrendering and letting go and, and shifting those perspectives in the first like two to three weeks of October. And then towards the end of October, we're all going to feel this like big broom just kind of sweep some stuff out. So go through the process that you need to, uh, you know, listen to your gut intuition and and move from there. Um, that's that's probably I, I, I love October already because of how much has happened in September. So I hope this helps you um, again. Come back to this. Review it when you're especially going through chaos because we're not able to process it all at once and it will help you through um through this energy so you can you can heal at the level that you need to heal um in the perfect timing that you need to do it so again i am the earth school shaman i'm here to give you your uh, energy update every single month Uh, thank you for joining and i will see you guys next month Bye.